church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, we have uh, all the communion today. Our, as our tradition dictates, <coughs> and the first week of the of the of the of the month, we have all the communion in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ and the the sacrifice that He gave for us. Uh, so may I invite the choir to come back the ministry of the Holy Communion uh, uh, friends who are in charge please uh, start as uh, they read Luke chapter 22 verse four, from verse 14 when the hour came Jesus and his disciples apostles reclined at the table and they say to them I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before you suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. 17. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20. The same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the, but, but the hand of him who is going to, be, to betray me is with me and in the table. The Son of Man will go, will go as it has been decreed. But woe to that man who betrays him. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. May we pray that we don't find ourselves being uh, the, the, the traitors even as we take, as we partake of the Lord's table. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that your son, Jesus Christ, gave. We want to thank you so much for this day, which you gave to us even before it began, that we might live through it to see your goodness in the land of the living. Now, Holy Father, we pray that even as we partake of the Holy Communion in remembrance of you, we pray, O oh Lord, that our bodies will be made whole our sins will be forgiven and every tear will be wiped away every burden lifted every question answered it and every shackle be broken in Jesus name we thank you for your presence in this place thank you for the spirit of God in Jesus name Amen
first took bread and gave to his disciples. After breaking it, Father, we want to thank you for your good day which was given to us. Thank you, Lord, even as we partake of it, we pray. The Lord will do what it has to do and what it can only do in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. May we take the bread. Same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, "This is the this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Always do it in remembrance of me." May we take the cup. Jesus, the blood that speaks a better language than the blood of Abel, which he chooses. Thank you for that blood, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, boy. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for today. We invite your presence, Lord, in our midst. Even as we share from your word, all our eyes, our spiritual eyes will be opened that we will see what you want us to see. Our ears will be unstopped to hear from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, may you give us the spirit from your word, not the letter which kills, but the spirit who gives life from your word. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning and afternoon we want to talk about uh, Thanksgiving. Um, we are still in the season of uh, the festival of Thanksgiving. Uh, the, the next Sunday we shall be here in the throngs. There will be multitudes of people to give thanks to our God. Um, does he Thanksgiving is, is it an important thing in the in, in the body of Christ? Is it something that really uh, does it have any place in the, in the heart of God, or do we just do it because we have to do it anyway? Nina, what is Thanksgiving and what does it mean uh, when we talk about a thank offering to our God? Um, when you look at the lives of all the men and women of God who achieved the great things, you realize that they had, they always, they had a habit of always giving thanks to God quite often. Some countries actually have celebrations which run through days, jubilating celebrating the goodness of God. Amen. In a country like the USA, the most powerful country on planet Earth now, they have a Thanksgiving Day where nobody ever touches anything apart from giving thanks and, and exchanging gifts. And another country which takes it a notch higher is Israel. For them, they have celebrations which run through weeks. I mean, uh, they have uh, uh, five, five types of offerings, and those ones take days. Then they have the, the, what they call the, 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 the feasts, seven feasts, and they are actually each feast out of the seven takes days. Men, jubilating, celebrating the goodness of God. So when we are talking about thanksgiving, it is something that is very important and God attaches a lot of importance to it. Thanksgiving. How many of you have children? I'm sure a number of us have children. If not, 
you are going to get, don't worry. Uh, when, hallelujah, receive in Jesus' name. Uh, some of us who have children, you, you know what it means when you give a child something and they just ignore or simply say nothing. You feel like either you want to spark such a child or you, you feel you should never give them anything again. Equally so, when somebody, when, when you give a child and she, come, she or he comes back and says, thank you daddy, thank you mommy, you feel like giving them more. Our God, our Father, is actually a parent, the best of, ever, of, of, of parents you can ever imagine. And each time he gives us something, each time he gives us a victory, each time there is something, a milestone in our lives, it is only important that we remember to say thank you, our Father. Thank you. Let us look at some of the, the, the things that we can find in the Bible, which actually make us to believe that thanksgiving has a very special position in the heart of God. Number one, <clears throat> thanksgiving touches the heart of God in a way that not many things will do that, will do it. If you look at the life of Solomon, uh, we are not reading because of time, but if you look at Solomon, uh, first Kings, you are right, you're, if you're writing right from uh, First Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 5, you realize that he, the, 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 uh, Solomon and his kingship had been settled. His kingship, as if, a matter of fact, this man had already been installed as king. So there was nothing about, the, about him giving or, or trying to bribe God. Because he had been installed by his father in the, in the preceding verses, so he was already a king. Hallelujah. There was nothing, there was no question about it. But there was something that God was still waiting to do in his life. And this never happened until he had done something for God, to move the heart of God. God knew him as a king after his father, David. He had, the, 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 his father had installed him and he had had some people who tried to oppose him, but still, because the father had determined that he becomes the king after him and God had promised it so, it was. So he was already king. But the Bible says in, that, in, the, in, in chapter 3 of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 3, Verse 4, that, and, and Solomon went and offered 1,000 heads of cattle as an offering to God. He is already king, remember. In other words, see, if it was a miracle, he had already received the miracle. If it was a prayer, the prayer had already been answered. So he was king. But in remembrance of, what, of the goodness of God, of, or in, in remembrance of what God had done for him, he goes back and offers 1,000 heads of cattle as an offering to God. It moved the heart of God and said, mm, let me go down here and see what is happening. What is this young man? Who is this young man who has done this for me? And when he comes down, the rest is history. The Bible says that he, the, the Lord asks this young man, what do you want me to do for you? I do know the Bible, so you remember what he asked before. If you don't remember, please you can remind yourself by reading this chapter, chapter 3 of 1 Kings. So, the thank offering it touches the heart of God and it moves the heart of God in a way that not many things will do. Hallelujah. You want God to move in a special way in your life. Learn to thank Him. Learn to give Him a thank offering. Learn to spare time and thank Him. Amen. There are many things that we can thank Him for. 
In fact, if God were to open our eyes to see the, in the spiritual world what, how many battles he fights for us, how many things he spares us from, we would never, we would stop uh, praying and continuously thank him because of the way he loves us and the way and how much he spares us and how much he fights for us. We would stop praying and complaining and simply thank him continuously because he does much, much, much more than what we even th uh, pray about. We call ourselves powerful intercessors. Man, if the only powerful intercessor is the Holy Spirit for you, Amen. not in you. Amen. Hallelujah. So if God were to open our eyes to see, we would stop praying and thank him and he would do more. But anyway, we still have to pray because in any case, God never does anything except in the answer to prayers. Praise the Lord. So we have to pray. But remember to thank him much more. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So the, uh, 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 our man Solomon remembers and says, let me offer a thank offering to my God who has secured this throne for me. If you read the Bible, as you are going to do, you realize that you realize that there are people who are st stood in opposition for him, uh, uh, in, in, uh, for him to stand to, to, to succeed his father. One of whom was his own brother. He wanted to stop him, but his father heard about it, although he was frail, and he said, "No, it, was, it is this boy who is going to succeed me." And he made sure he sold him before he died. Now, God, when God came, he said, because you have not asked for many other things, because you have not even asked for the head of the man who stood in opposition for you, against you, I'm going to do this and this and this for you. You want more from God? Learn to thank him. You want, more, you want to, to get much more from God? You want to move the heart of God in, a, in your life in a way that not many people have experienced. Learn to thank Him. Amen. Remember what He has done for you and thank Him. Number next, thanksgiving honors God and is a great form of worship. Amen. We look in, in you are you're writing down, please, Second Samuel chapter 6. From verse 12 to 23, the Bible talks about the day David, the king, a great king, danced before the Lord because the Ark of the Covenant was coming back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So when he saw the great things that God had done, he could not help it but to dance before the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that when the, the cart which was carrying the covenant, the, the ark of the Lord, the covenant box, had moved it 600 meters, the Bible says that David offered a thank offering. A bull died, or um, several bulls perished, in, because the, the, the covenant box was steadily moving. Bulls were being slaughtered. As the covenant box moved, bulls were also perishing in the honor of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that when it finally reached its resting place, David honored God with much more offerings. Praise the Lord. Amen. The move of God in your life must be celebrated continuously. The things that God has done are great in your life, in my life, which must be celebrated continuously. And people must see Hallelujah. There is nothing like gentility. Amen. The honorable seat, please help us, and you remain honorable in the parliament. <laughs> when you come in the presence of God, where we dance and you forget even the first gentleman of places, please remember when you come in the house of the Lord, for us we celebrate no king, no commoner, no, no, nobody. Yeah, hallelujah. The Bible says that David danced to the point when he even lost his robes as the king. 
and some some stupid girl, some stupid woman, unfortunately, uh, despised the king because she was like, how can the king, the whole king, degrade himself like this? Even lose your robe, you lose your tie, you lose you, you remove your coat and you tie it around the waist to dance. How king? The Bible says she was under a curse. She was she never produced in her life. You read that. Praise the Lord. The king was elevated much more than he than what he has been he had been before in the eyes of God and in the eyes of people who feared God. In the eyes of those who did not fear God, he was despised. It's okay. But in the eyes of those who feared God, and the eyes of God himself, David was elevated. David was promoted. David gained more in thanking our God, in praising and worshiping God. Hallelujah. The thank offerings opens more doors. Hallelujah. In Psalm chapter 50, uh, Psalm 50, Psalm number 50, verse 23, the Bible says that he who offers me a thank offering honors me and he prepares me a, 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 a way for me to, to show him the salvation of the Lord. The salvation of the Lord. There are many salvations, but the salvation of the Lord is what you and I need. The salvation of the Lord. There, is, there can be also the salvation of man. When a man comes to your rescue, you, they have saved you from some clear and, uh, and imminent danger. If you are, you are lacking money and someone comes and gives you a 50k, you say, you have saved me. Thank you. When if you have been hungry and someone comes and gives you some food, you say, thank you, you have saved me from hunger. Praise the Lord. So, there are many salvations. But there is a salvation which you and I need because that's a salvation which never fails. The salvation of man can fail because I can promise you something because someone has also promised me something and they fail me. I also fail you. Hallelujah. I, uh, sometimes I can give you food today and even tomorrow, but the next day, the, the third day, I say, uh -uh, I have given you enough. Sorry. Try somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because salvation of man is limited. Salvation of man sometimes is conditional. If you don't smell me back, I am not going to give you my money. But to God, whether you smile or not, when he has determined to bless you, he's going to bless you. Praise the Lord. Right. He's going to save you because the only one who can save you to the ultimate. Hallelujah. So, the salvation of God is what you and I need more than the salvation of any other being. So, the Bible says that you honors me with the thank offering prepares a way for me to show him the salvation of God. Hallelujah. But the th a thank offering establishes our promises and our miracles. There are miracles that you're going to get and before they are established in your life, you need to give a thank offering. Hallelujah. Amen. If you look at the, 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 the uh, if you read the, 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 the book of Luke chapter 17, you, re, you, you read about the lepers, the ten lepers. The Bible says that they were all cleansed, but they were not all made whole. Amen. There is a difference between being cleansed and being made perfect, made whole. The Bible says that only one out of the ten who had been cleansed of leprosy came back and gave thanks to the, the master, the teacher, the Lord, the Savior. He only one remembered a tenth. A tenth only remembered to come back and say thank you. 
And the Bible says, the, the, the Lord told, tells him, you go your way because your faith has made you well. Meaning, the nine were not made well. They were cleansed, but probably they got their the leprosy back. You don't know. I don't know. But they were not made whole. Only one was made whole. Why? Because he gave thanks. He remembered the Lord. He remembered the, 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 the way we have a thanksgiving. No. In your house, in your home, in your offices, in, your, in, in, in the lives of the people who are around you. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Glorify his name. In doing so, you are the, the miracles that are in your life are going to be established, never to be moved, never to be shaken. Mm. Amen. Mm. A thank offering is a command according to the Bible. If you look at the the, 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 the first seven chapters of Leviticus, you are going to realize that the, the, the Bible talks about seven offerings of Israel. No, five offerings of Israel and seven festivals of celebrations that, 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 that God commanded the children of Israel to observe every year. Amen. One of the, the five offerings was called the, the peace offering. And the peace offering was always something that was made of some of, of that was offered from uh, burnt, um, things that could be burnt, like grains, like like meat, like a whole meal, like a, what? Mjanjaro, eh? wheat, ensigo, uh, legume. You, 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 uh, when they were burnt, this, the, the, the aroma, the sweet aroma went up to in, in smoke. Now, it was something that tested people's faith. Because how, how if I am offering something that is going to go into smoke, the, the smoke goes away. Amen? I have bought my thing that has gone up in smoke. <laughs> have a I made a rose? It's gone up. Bible says God commanded them to do it continuously. One of them was the peace offering. Uh, which was which went up in small. But the Bible says that each time that happened, God in remembrance of what rather in recognition of that, God moved in their behalf, God moved in their lives, God did wonders in their lives. The other celebration in the, the seven festivals of, of Israel was called the, the festival of the tabernacles. This was significant in their lives, in the lives of God's people, because it was a constant rem reminder for them that God always wanted them to wanted to give God's people, His people, stability, amen, a shelter, a permanent shelter, and the permanent, the most permanent shelter that that that, that is depicted here is the, the New Jerusalem, where God and His people will dwell permanently and forever and ever, amen. But. The Feast of Tabernacles was also uh, significant because God always provided God, His people shelter, with shelter, even through the wilderness. Amen. And up to today, how many people celebrate when God has put a roof upon your head? How many? Over you say, ah, Pastor, I am the one who pays rent. It's okay. I, uh, well, why should I? After all, the landlord always knocks at my door. Yes. But he, he could have thrown you out if you didn't pay the rent. So why don't you thank God? Because there is a roof upon your, your, your head. I was in a country recently where people are helped because we have, actually we have, I think most, it's a very powerful country, but we have more street people than even in Uganda, which is called a third world country. Amen. Street, streets, 
and now there is a heat, immense heat, and people are dying in that country simply because they, they have no shelter, they have nowhere to hide. Winter comes, it, 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 terrible. When summer comes, it scorches you to, to death. Such a person, when they are put in homes, in a shelter, they are they are over the moon. It is a miracle, a big miracle to them. Now, you can imagine such a thing can easily happen to you and me. Very easily. When there is no roof over your head. So God constantly reminded these people that you know, if it were not for my grace and mercy, you could also be wandering, you could also be homeless. But I have given you grace to have something over your head. So remember me. It's only fair that you remember when God has put a roof over your head. All these sacrifices, all these celebrations were the five sacrifices and the seven celebrations or all, all of them, you are, you are going to read that in chapter 1 up to chapter 7 of Leviticus. You realize that all these were significant or re reminded these people of the faithfulness of God in the various areas of their lives. Hallelujah. Is your heart healthy? Uh, a thank offering takes one back in memory of where God picks the, picked them from. Hallelujah. If you don't remember where you came from, you can never reach where you are going. Amen. Those who remember where they came from always reach where they are going. But those who don't, they fail somewhere along the way. There is a, 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 there is a significance eh, in the place where you began from, where God picked you from. When you look at the life of Jacob, our man, eh, our friend, our friend, the father of nations, <laughs> President Museven preached about him when he was talking to Dr. Stephen as him the other day, and his group, and your group, he was talking about our friend Jacob. Jacob was a thug, he was a chaplain, he was a thief. But God blessed him because he knew how to manage resources. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the other one who feared to manage resources, he was cheated out of, swindled out of his possession, his blessing. Why? When you look at the life of, of Jacob, he always remembered the, 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 the significant places in his life. First of all, he, he knew who had a key to, where, to what he wanted. So he befriended the mother, who in turn, uh, she, 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 she cheated for him, told him Muse is about to release a blessing, and therefore you better do a B, C, D. The rest is history. Hallelujah. Now, you look at it, his life. In chapter 22 of, or 28 of Genesis, the Bible says that when he was free, running away, as, as those, as you know, that's the bachari we have here. You are always on the move. <laughs> Someone is looking for you. <laughs> yes, we have to take cover. Amina. So as he was taking cover, as he was running away from the brother Esau, the Bible says that he, he was weary, so he had to fall down to sleep. And as he left, the Bible says that he saw ladders. With angels coming up and down, coming up and down. When he woke up, he said, no, this place is a very significant place. This place is... So he called it Bethel, the house of God. Now, the Bible says in chapter 35 of the same book, Genesis, that Jacob gathered all his people, children and wives, and went back to Bethel to check upon that place. Amen. Remembering 
the place where God visited you from. And remembering the people God used to bless you. God does not work in abstract friends. No. He works through his people. You are his hands and his legs. I am his hands and his legs. I am even his mouthpiece now, today. Hallelujah. So when I speak in your life, you must remember me. When someone speaks in your life, or God uses them to do something, God bless you. When God, if, if, if God has used somebody in your life to bless you, it's only fair and godly and Christian to remember such a people. Amen. 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 Don't use them and, uh, as, as leaders. Mm -hmm. No, they are not. They are significant vessels of God in your life. Mm -hmm. And the places, Muchifochiri, Manarabi Katonda, Muchifochiri, Manarabi Kuverika, that place. How many times do you remember? How many times do I remember and go back? The parents who gave birth to me, to you. Do you how many times do you remember to bless them? How many times do you remember to make to care to give them a call and say thank you, mommy? The, I love you, Daddy. Hallelujah. And the spiritual parents in our lives. Some of us think we are orphans, spiritual orphans, because of the way we behave. Yeah. and complete orphan spiritually. It is very dangerous to be a spiritual orphan. But you are not, and I am not. But do you remember those parents and give them a call? And thank, say thank you. The places where God remembered and picked you from. Those are very important places. Praise the Lord. Now, as we give thanks, we have to remember that there are things that can easily spoil our sacrifices. You look at the life of these two young men. One was in, in, in the book of Genesis, chapter 4. One was called Cain. The other one was called Abel. The Bible says that Abel's occupation was uh, rain, livestock, cattle, sheep, goats, love. The other one came, his profession was cultivation. Mm -hmm. A farmer, but farming is here. Yeah? Farming is a mixture. So how do you call the, 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 the one who tilled who, who tilled the, the ground? Agriculture, agriculture is it? Oh, a cultivator. Okay, got it. There is someone who, who sows the seeds in the ground and they sprout it. My unil, vonde, wogo, those things. Hmm? That was the profession of our friend Cain. Now. So these were two different professions. And therefore, someone had to give from what the, the God gave them according to their professions. So the Bible says that time came when they were to offer, each was to offer a, a, an offering to God. And each one of them brought it from what God had given them. So, there was nothing wrong with being a cultivator. There was nothing wrong with being a livestock keeper. Nothing. What made them, then what, what was the problem with the Cain's offering? Because the Bible says that God despised Cain's offering, but he looked in favor upon Abel's offering. Was it because um, uh, uh, Abel brought a kibumba and the, and the other one brought a muogo? No, I don't think so. And it's not correct. Because it is God who had determined it, that Cain should be, um, should be uh, 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 responsible for muogo and rumode, uh, and the other one should be responsible for cows and goats. So it was God's decision. 
So each one of them wrote according to how God had determined to bless them. So there was nothing wrong with that. Amen. The point was the attitude. The attitude of the giver. Be careful how you feel your attitude when it comes to giving an offering to God. Let us read quickly, uh, not, not, no, no, not, quick, uh, not uh, reading from the Bible, but let us look at uh, some points which um, can help us to guard against this. The, why, why was King's uh, bless, uh, offering rejected and the Abel's offering accepted? It was not because the other one had the, was flesh and this one was uh, something else, no. It was the attitude of the heart of the people who are giving. Abel's, number one, Abel's sacrifice was initiated or occasioned by the Holy Spirit. While the, the, the sacrifice of his brother Cain was occasioned by the flesh. That's the difference number one, which we need to be careful about. What is it? When you are giving an offering, is it because the Spirit of God has moved you or the flesh has moved you? If it is the flesh, my friend, you have made a loss. But if it is the Spirit of God who has moved you and said, I want you to do A, B, C, D, do it and do it very fast before Mr. Flesh catches up with you. Amen? Run fast and do it. Before you even think about the implication, sometimes you don't even have to share with the people around you. you, you like, I feel like I do doing this. My friend, some of those people around you, the Lord said, the, the Lord Jesus told Peter, one of, the, one of the most powerful apostles, he told him to get behind me, Satan. Why? Because he saw the devil in the man, in this man, trying to derail him from his mission. Sometimes you don't even have to tell people what you're going to do. Like, like Moses Abraham, he did not tell Sarah that I'm going to sacrifice Sarah. Sarah, Sarah prepare to cry. Sorry, but I'm going to do it because God has told me. If he had told, if he had done so, uh, there would have been a fire in his home, probably. So, in wisdom, he did not do it. Is it what you're going to do? Is it initiated? Is it, or is it orchestrated by the Spirit of God? Or it is the flesh at work speaking? Be careful. Praise the Lord. Because that is, uh, the, the, that, that, that is what made a difference between Cain's offering and Abel's offering, one of which was accepted and the other one rejected. Number two, Abel's sacrifice was from a humble heart, while that of Cain was from a, an I don't care attitude. Amen. This one was like, whatever I have, big or small, much or small. Is from you. So in her, in humility, I am offering this. It's not much to offer, but it is offered for, for, from a, a humble heart. So please accept it. Be pleased to accept it, my sacrifice. The other one was in It's like you're throwing it at a uh, dog. That I do not care attitude. Even the way you come, you compose yourself when they call for the offerings here. The way you carry that offering is a very important. The Lord is looking at it. The way you, you, you get the money from your pocket and you, you, you like this and you are... <laughs> it, the, oh man, the, the heart is very, very deceptive and very wicked. Be careful. What is your attitude when you're going to offer an offering to God? This one was a uh, uh, Sifudelio. Mm -hmm. 
I don't care. And he, he was rejected. While the man who, was, who had humility going before him was accepted. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three, while Abel Abbe knew that all what he had was the Lord's, Cain thought he was doing a favor to God to sacrifice for him, to him. You are not doing any favor to God. No. Amen. When you are giving to God, when you are doing something for God, when you are glorifying God's name, you are not doing him any favor. Because he has 7,000 people ready to replace you if you make any mistake. So, it count it pure joy and an honor when God chooses you to bless his holy name. Don't think you are the only person around. 7,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7,000 people ready, ready to replace you. So be humble enough and understand that you are not the only one. God has. It's not a story. Katika Chibiri Tembo, Karunda Inakamo, so he is very, very careful with you. No. There is a man called, a great man called Elijah. He was a powerful man of God. He slaughtered 850 prophets of Baal in one day. 400 were uh, at the table of, of, of the king, and the other 450 were at the table of the queen. He slaughtered them in one day. So he was like, I'm the only bull around. So God, if, 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 if anything happened to me, God has made a loss. That was the, the attitude. And so he came and told it to God. Can you imagine? <laughs> he told it to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, I am the only one remaining. Now I can look at this woman. She is hurting for my head. She is going to kill me. But remember God, if I were to die today, you are finished also because your business is gone. <laughs> and so God told him, oh, this is what you're saying. Say, oh, I have 7,000 who have not knelt before the bath. And, and in fact, as a result, the man was sacked. He was sacked. If you read the Bible properly, you are going to realize that after that, God told him, you go and anoint that young man called Elisha, who has been your cup bearer, because he's going to take over to you. For you, you are coming over. Finished. You know he was retired before he was tired. Amen. Why? Don't, don't think you are very special. No. What makes you special is your humility before God, who qualifies you. So, Cain thought he was doing a favor to God. Abel was like, you were not for your goodness, Lord. I would not be where I am. I would not be even able to stand. I would not be able to give what I have given. So please, be pleased to accept this. And he was, he found favor before the Lord. Hallelujah. And the other point was, is Abel's sacrifice was meant to please the Lord, while Cain was an obligation. Amen. When you are doing something from a Nahorantia attitude, from a Kutukirizomu Koro attitude, from a, I let me do it anyway as, as like, like paying tax. Yeah? God is not a tax collector, friends. He's not. So if you are doing something because you have, you feel, what will people say? If I don't do this, what will people say if I don't go to church today? What would so and so say if I don't do A, B, C, D? That Nakorantia attitude, that Oktukizomokolo attitude, that uh, obligatory attitude will make you disqualified mm. and your sacrifice rejected. Mm. So please understand. 
that he, you are not doing it out of an obligation. You are doing it because you are you, the Lord has blessed you and you are pleased. You are you are rejoicing before Him for what He has done for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in chapter in chapter fifty one and rather in Psalm fifty one that a broken and contrite spirit God does not reject. It. Amen. The heart. Of humility, the heart of, 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 of thanksgiving, the heart of gratitude is something that will help you qualify your sacrifice. Otherwise, you may be you may jump out with nothing. Amen. So sacrifice, if you look at these two gentlemen, sacrifice is, may not be the same. Rather, the giving may not be the same. But the sacrifice is always the same. If I, God gave me a hundred million shillings and I gave ten million and another one was given um, a, a, a million and I gave a hundred thousand, who has given more? The same. <laughs> Now, <laughs> one day we, we, we had a discussion uh, where somebody asked, if you have one kilogram of white ant feathers and uh, another kilogram of stones, which one is heavier? <laughs> and two people say, of course the stones, the <laughs> The kilogram of stones must be heavier than the kilogram of white of white ant feathers. Eh, so <laughs> now you know who won. <laughs> who won? <laughs> the two people said the weight the, the, the stones or so anyway. If God has given you a hundred million and you gave ten million. And another one was given one million, and they gave one hundred thousand. The, the, the giving is not the same, but the sacrifice is the same. Praise the Lord, because the the white the, the kilogram of white white ant feathers is one kilogram still, even if it filled the whole of this area. And one kg of stone is the same. Praise the Lord. So the giving may not be the same. But the sacrifice is the same because of the heart. Hallelujah. The heart. So be careful what your heart says. A broken and contrite heart, the Lord does not despise. Praise the Lord. So when you're giving, whether it is a hundred million or ten million, one shilling, or praising and worshiping the Lord, or dancing before the Lord, remember to check your heart, the state of the affairs of your heart, because that is what is going to make a difference between the acceptance of your sacrifice or rejection of the same. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> Um, we, come, we have come to an end of our sermon. We bless the Lord. So we are going to dance before the Lord as we come to give in the house of the Lord. There is dancing today in the house of the Lord. There is dancing today in the house of the Lord. We will dance together in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. We will join sing today in the house of the Lord. There we will join sing today in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah today in the house of the Lord. House of the Lord, there is dancing today in the house of the Lord. There is dancing today in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah today in the house of the Lord. Oh, there is dancing today in the house of the Lord. There is dancing today.
Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for honoring us by your presence in this in our ministry today. We want to thank you for the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Lord, for what you have blessed us with, and from which you are, we are going to come before you, Lord, to give back. We pray in Jesus' name that this will be held in memory of us, O Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for our sins and our redemption. I want to thank you, Lord, for blessing your people, Lord. Thank you, Lord, so much for the word that you have given to us, O Lord. I pray that this word will take root in our hearts, O Lord. And bear fruit which will last for the glory of your holy and most honorable name. Now, Holy Father, I pray for every man and every woman whom you have blessed and who is come in your presence to give thanks back to you. The Lord, you bless them and honor them and elevate them more and more, Lord. That they will be blessed much more. That they will not no longer be called blessed, but they will be called blessings themselves. Father, we thank you for loving us more than anybody who could ever love us. Now, Holy Father, we pray that even as we part company today, we shall part company physically, but in spirit we shall remain together. We pray that this week coming will be blessed beyond measure. That your people will come back the next Sunday in celebrations and jubilations before you dancing before you, blessing your holy name in remembrance of what you've done for us, achievement or milestone in our lives. We thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' holy and most honorable name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.